just want to be with you. Just want to be with you.
Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Welcome to another session of our online Bible study, Cornerstone Apostolic Church. I want to welcome all of you. Uh, gather your family around, your loved ones close to you there. Turn up the volume, get your Bibles out, your notepad, your iPad, your laptop, whatever you're using. And um, we are set for another session on looking into the Word of the Lord and drawing strength and encouragement from that. I want to, uh, want to encourage you to continuously seek after God. Uh, continuously find time for the Lord in your word, in prayer, just talking to the Lord. Develop that passion and desire to want to know Him. Now more than ever before, we need to know the Word. We need to know the voice and the, the Word of God in our lives. Uh, we are going to continue in our series that we have started uh, several weeks ago. And uh, it is on the Psalms. And uh, tonight we're going to look at a, a couple of other Psalms that are connected together. And I do hope and trust that you're learning, you're growing in the Word. And uh, as I state every week, uh, in these sessions, please take time to look into it uh, on your own time. Spend some time maybe talking about the topics or the verses with your family. And um, ju just get to really love the Word of the Lord. It'll, it'll prove to be a blessing to you time and time and time again. Um, we will open with prayer tonight. Uh, there's no telling what's going on in your week. I know that here we are in the middle of June and uh, just a lot of things are changing a lot of things in our society and culture, uh, things with the pandemic, things on jobs, the financial market, on and on it goes. Uh, but our, our nation, our world, our city, our community needs God, needs uh, the hand of the Lord upon each one of our neighbors and our friends and families here. So let's pray together for that. You know the needs you have. Pray for them. Lord, we are thankful tonight to be together one more time. Thankful for the Word of God that's a lamp to our feet. Thank you, Lord, for the time that we can spend together looking at the Word of the Lord, studying the Word of the Lord, trying to comprehend and understand it. Lord, tonight we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I pray, Lord, for our nation. I pray, Lord, for our, our leaders. I pray, Lord, for our city and our state, for our community. I pray, Lord, for our world, God, our missionaries and, and leaders around the world. God, be with them. Tonight, on this Wednesday night, Lord, we gather in your name, trusting that you're going to help us, you're going to lead us, Lord, in your word, and it's going to show us the path to take daily, God, as we grow in love and we understand more and more about you. Help us tonight. Lead us in the way, Lord. I trust you for great things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, a couple of weeks ago, if you'll recall, uh, we, we went back to Psalm the first one, number one, and uh, we, we did a, a, one of our sessions on that and how that uh, standing and, 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 and sitting in the seat and so forth, we have to be cautious of that. We've got to seek counsel from, from godly people and from the Word of God. Tonight, we're going to fast forward, and we're going to go towards the end of the book of Psalm. And uh, I want to begin tonight in Psalm chapter 146. Psalm chapter 146, um, a very powerful series here of, of verses that we're going to look at tonight. I think it's going to encourage many of us. I know, I know that I need it often, but an encouraging word of the Lord. Uh, verse number one of Psalm 146 tells us this, praise ye the Lord. It's a statement. It's a, a command. It's uh, this is what you ought to do. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Verse 2, while I live, will I praise the Lord. I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. As long as I'm alive, taking breath, I can praise the Lord. Again, we, we look here at the ending of these psalms and how they've been put in, in a certain format and an order that praising the Lord is what it's really all about. And, and having that that connectedness and that fellowship and relationship with God is so vitally important as humans walking planet Earth in 2020. Uh, we need to praise the Lord. And as long as we're able to, we need to lift up His name. 
Singing, according to this one, uh, I, w I will sing praises to the Lord. There's a melody that's inside of you. When you sing, something begins to happen. There, there's a, a joy. There's a transition, if you will. The transition, if you, if, if you can look at your history and you go in and study this, basically the transition of these opening remarks, praise ye the Lord, if you go to the original, it was simply hallelujah. All that could be established here is the high praise. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. That's how it begins because there's a joy and an understanding of who God is and who you are in his eyes. Let's continue a little further. Uh, verse number 5 of chapter 146. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God which made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is therein, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry. Verse 5 and, and forward here, happy is, is the one that has the God that helps him. I, I don't, I'm not sure that, that, I, I, that I know all about your life, but for me, I, I enjoy being happy. I don't like the depression and the, and the confusion and the questions that come with life. I enjoy a smile on my face, a contentment in knowing that he made the heavens and the earth. He made the sea. He made the dry land. He keepeth the truth forever. If you're ever wondering where to find truth, know that it is in the voice and the word of God. He knows how to execute judgment. And he knows how to give to those who are in need. Help comes to you and I from the hand of the Lord. That knowledge ought to bring joy and happiness to your heart. Uh, God made the heavens. He made everything about it. And knowing that should cause you to smile. Now, sometimes you can be in the worst of situations in your life. But if you think about the goodness of God, it should raise a praise and a hallelujah inside of you. Continuing here a bit further, Psalm 146, verse 7, The Lord looseth the prisoners. The Lord openeth the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. Verse 9, The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever. Even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations, notice what he says at the end here, praise ye the Lord. There are parts of the song here that we just read that brags on God. What's it mean to brag on God is to praise, to identify his goodness and what he has done in your life. He looses the prisoners. He opens blind eyes. He raises the ones that are down and out. He loves the righteous things. He, he, he preserves strangers. Listen, when that happens, you need to know that his, his ability to take care of the fatherless, take care of orphans, and, and take care of widows, uh, that is his joy and, and pleasure to do so. That's why as, as the church body, we, we are encouraged to do the same because in doing that, he teaches this in the New Testament many times, in taking care of those who are in great need, he mentions the, the or orphans or the fatherless and, and the widows, uh, we are using his hand to bless them and to take care of them. And that, that should make us happy. Um, also at the end there, we notice what he does to the wicked. Did you see what happened there? He takes whatever they're doing and he flips it over. Um, God reigns. He is on the throne. He is exalted. In Psalm 146, it is all about praising and identifying with the goodness and the grace and the love and the mercy and the, the compassion and the righteousness of a holy God. You and I should be very encouraged by this tonight because in your dark time, your lonely time, or, or just time of, of, of reflection, you can identify with who God is. The, the psalm does not end there, although 146 does, again, according to translation, but it actually continues because notice Psalm 147, praise ye the Lord. Again, reverting back, this basically says hallelujah, the high praise, hallelujah. 
It is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant and praise is comely. It's a good thing to praise the Lord. In fact, it is it's very pleasant to praise God. You should feel good when you praise the Lord. And, and then it says it's comely, which means the appearance that on you, what it looks like is it makes you look better when you are in the action and the, and the position of praising the Lord God. He, he continues in verse 3. He healeth the broken in heart, bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our God, verse 5 says. Great is our Lord and of great power. His understanding is infinite. On and on and on. Notice what he says here. The psalmist writes in, in 147. The praise he's given him, he's calling him a healer. He's calling him a, a one that binds up wounds. That would be almost like the, the, uh, the doctor or the nurse that not only heals it, but takes it and, and deals with the wound. Uh, he knows the stars. How, how, can, how can you and I even understand or comprehend the, the vastness of, of the heavens, the galaxies and stars. And he knows it so well that he's even given the stars names and he calls them by their name. His understanding, friend, has no limits. Now, this should be one of the most encouraging things to you and I. Knowing that God is truly worthy of praise. And the more you talk about him, the more you spend time bragging on him and, and, and identifying with what he has done or what he is doing presently, what he's going to do in the future, that should excite your soul. He, he, there, there's an incredible insight that the psalmist has here. Notice what he says in verse 7. Listen to this. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God who covereth the heaven with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He, he giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy. What a powerful series of statements here. When you sing to the Lord with a thankful heart. Come on, when, when you truly say, Lord, I thank you in all of life situations. When you really comprehend just how great God is. He, he's got the clouds in his hands. He's making sure there's rain for the earth. He's even making sure that there's grass growing on the mountains. He's making sure that animals have what they need, that cycle in, in the life of animals, if you will. He takes pleasure in those who fear, who revere, respect him, and those that hope in his mercy. You can go back through many of the other psalms and the songs that were written and, and, and you can find statements that are very profound. A real short one is simply this, His mercy endureth forever. God's working on you. And although we deserve a lot worse or a lot less or things to be a lot more of a mess, His mercy says, if you'll love and seek after me, I will be there for you always. Singing unto the Lord God is very paramount in the life of a Christian. The ones who hope in his mercy have the blessings of God working daily in their lives. Every single one of these psalms that we've read in the last several weeks, or if you go back and, and study some on your own, you, you're going to know that there are sets of words of poetry that are set to a rhythm. And there's an obvious statement here that is made, but I think it interesting to note here. The psalmist says in 147 verse 7 to sing unto the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Why, why is there power in singing to the Lord? As your heart, your emotions, your, your feeling begins to rise in the hope and the trust and confidence in who God is in your life, something will begin to transpire in you. 
when you begin to sing, you know, we know that there's poetry here. We know that it's set to rhythm. But when you open your mouth and begin to sing and make that melody within, it puts you in a different state of mind. It's a power that is present there. And it continues here. Notice in Psalm 147, verse 14, He maketh peace in thy borders. He filleth thee with the finest of wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon earth. His word runneth very swiftly. He giveth snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his coal? Verse 18, he sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth his wind to blow and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgments unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation as for his judgments. They have not known them. Hallelujah or praise the Lord. Psalm 146, 147. It is a beautiful, beautiful rendition of a, a series of words set to rhythm, if you will, in a song. Understanding that God has all things in his control. He, he, he spoke in, in earlier about the mountains and grass and the, the animals and so forth. And then here he, he speaks of the weather and the cold and the heat and so forth and how that God controls what is going on there. The, the fact of the matter is, friend, is that you and I, in all of life situations, we, we, can, we can find ourselves to be very desperate. But if you will praise the Lord, if you'll brag on him and, and repeat to him, the blessings and the goodness and the things that he has done in your life. It can change everything about your situation. I would challenge you on a daily basis to find something to praise God for. Come on, in, in any of life's circumstances, look for the good things of God and praise him for it. In fact, nothing wrong with just letting out a big song of your heart and singing about the goodness and the mercy and the love of God. I challenge you the week to come, as you go back into these verses and you spend time with your family in these verses, um, just pause and reflect on the great things that God has accomplished. Come on, if you are in your, you are in your right mind in this crazy world we're living in, you ought to praise the Lord. If you have food on your table and, and you've got provision in your home for your family, you, you, you can praise the Lord for that. If you've got a job, if things are going on in your life, and even if you're not on the mountain per se, you're, you're living and God is blessing, you, you can praise Him through all of that. As students of the Word, we have to take an interest in why and how these things were written. For you and I, it has to be in our heart to want to know more about God, to want to understand more about who He is. What that will do for you is it will help your witness. It'll help if somebody, your coworker, or family member, or neighbor down the street, ask you about your God, how would you represent Him? What would you say? Uh, he, he's a good God that does this. And they would look at you maybe because they don't understand it. And as you begin to talk of his grace and his commandments and his mercy and love and his word and how it has worked in your life, the more you praise him, that can become your testimony. And the more you think and remember and bring back from your heart the great things that God has accomplished in you and in your family, the things that you still want him to accomplish and you're still praying about, you can brag on him and, and, and let people know that if God can do it with this, he is going to continue. And I know he can do it with this one. He is on our side. As, as I bring this night session to a close, I want you to understand that as you pray, pray for a heart and a desire of somebody who would really want to sing and praise God in all of life situations. Uh, have that positive attitude. Can I, can I say that and not be misunderstood? Uh, have that, that understanding and mindset that says, you know what, Lord, I, I really don't know how things are going to happen, but I'm going to praise you. 
and in spite of or because of all of life's situations, you praise the Lord. That's what Psalm 146 and 147 tells us. Praise Him in every situation. It's a wonderful thing to praise God, to sing praises unto Him. Uh, we're going to pray that, that the Lord will help us this week to be a witness to somebody else about His goodness, about His grace and love and mercy, and to share with them how He has blessed each of you. I want to pray for you about that. I want to pray that the Lord will give you opportunities to find out more about Him, and in doing so, you'll begin to tell what He's done in your life. Jesus, we love you, and we're so thankful for our time together once again. Lord, I thank you that when we praise you, when we lift up your name, when we brag on you and your grace and love and goodness to us, what we are doing, Lord, is we are identifying with who you are. And we are thanking you. We are grateful for what you are doing, what you have done, and what your plans are for each one of us in the future. Tonight, Lord, as we close this session out, I, I pray that understanding and knowledge and wisdom would come to each one of us. Let us, Lord, spend time in your word, understanding more about who you are and your plans for our lives. I thank you, Lord, for every heart and every family that's represented. Lord, if there's somebody that doesn't know you and, and they want to, I know, God, that you can reveal yourself to them. Repentance, Lord, they can turn around from where they are and they can begin to follow you. They can be baptized and have sins washed away in the only saving name of Jesus Christ. And you'll fill them with the Spirit. You'll let them speak in tongues, Lord. They can have that experience knowing their life is secure in you. I love you, Jesus. I plead your blood over us. Keep us until we come together again. Let the hand of the Lord reveal to us every day your plan and purpose for our lives. And we'll trust you for it. And we'll hope in you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Again, I thank you for joining with us. I would uh, mention to you about our weekend services on Sunday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Uh, Cornerstone Apostolic Church, we are meeting at 2101 West Shepherd Road. It's over by the airport here. It's the Metro Tab Church. Uh, they, were, they are allowing us to meet in their building at 3 o'clock. And what we have is we have a, a Sunday school class. We have a small group session, if you will, for the kids. We have one for the youth and the college and career age. And we have one for the adults, if you will. And that's about 30 minutes long till 3.30. And then we take a break. And we have some fellowship time. And then at 3.45, we all gather together in the sanctuary. And we begin to pray corporately together. There's a lot to pray for nowadays. And so we do that every Sunday at 3.45. At 4 o'clock, we go live on our website, and you can watch that on uh, cacchattanooga.org. Uh, tell your friends and neighbors about it. Go to Facebook. Go to YouTube. You can follow along there, and God will bless. But if you can be with us, come join us in person. Uh, we'll spend time in the Word at 4 o'clock. We'll worship. We'll sing together. We'll go to the Word of the Lord. We'll encourage one another. And I want to invite every single one of you to be involved with that, okay? Also, to our CAC members, don't forget, go on to cacchattanooga.org to click, uh, click on the giving link. There you can give your tithe and offerings, your missions, your building fund, whatever. We're still moving forward. God is still blessing you if you're faithful to Him. So do that. Even if you're not a member of the church, feel free to go on there. You can give, and the Lord will bless you, I know. I love all of you, and I, I believe in you, and I know God is doing great things. And as we have gone through these psalms, next week we'll have one more session on the psalms, and then in July and August we'll transition one more time. Uh, look for updates about that, but I want to encourage you to praise God in all of life situations. When you lay your head tonight down on your pillow, praise the Lord for that. And when you wake up in the morning, praise His name. I love you. Until next time, God bless you, and I'll see you soon. Your name is our battle cry. Your name is the banner we're lifting high. Your name is our victory. You fight for us, Jesus. We boldly face our fears. The no